Angelus, thank you for coming on Musicianship today. Thank you so much for having me. I am so excited that I met you through Mr. Joel Eccles and um, that I got the opportunity to just powwow with you over the past week by text or via email. Yeah. And we're two Florida women in California. <laughs> yeah, Florida, California girls. <laughs> I always said I was a Florida girl turned California woman. Yes. I Write that as a song. I can't. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm counting on you guys. Okay. Well, I just, I was fascinated because as we talked about, you know, you grew up in Florida. Tell us about like the beginnings because I didn't know, I knew you had a sister, but I didn't realize, and then I was doing my research, that you're a twin. And tell us about that and growing up in Gainesville and on a farm and the beginnings of recognizing your own voice. Oh my gosh. Okay. Um, <laughs> I, yeah, I have an identical twin sister. Her name is Alex. Um, she's, she's an actress. I mean, we were both, you know, grew, growing up doing acting stuff and um, in theater together and stuff. And then, you know, we sort of took divergent paths a little bit, you know, she's very focused on acting and I'm very focused on music now, um, but we can help each other. It, her, her little joke is she says, we're each other's special skill, like on the resume twin. So I can have someone who sounds just like me and looks like me to sing harmonies with me. And she can have someone who looks just like her act with her if she needs to. So, um, I, uh, we would, we would sing songs together. We made up little songs like in our tree house and stuff when we were, running around on the farm and and we were also very very shy I was extremely shy as a child and uh I I think singing is kind of how I broke out of my shell like started singing in church choir and stuff and then doing musical theater I was still so scared to sing <laughs> like on in front of people which is it still weirds me out that this is what I do for my life now because I used to be so terrified um and I think that there was this moment in this musical theater show that I was in when I was 11 I had to sing this song and and the, the director was like you know what if you can't do it then I'll just give it to someone else and I was like oh, no so I went <laughs> home yeah. and and just tried to sing as loud as I could and just push through it and and then told showed the, t the the director like look wait I can do it and um that's sort of how I got my voice a bit you know and and it was loud at first <laughs> um, and then that was more inspired by when I uh, learned about Brandy Carlisle and she sings mm -hmm. loud and I was like yes that's how I'm singing <laughs> I know I, I relate to that because I've always been told, oh, your voice is very loud. I was like, well, I, I'm a trained actor. That's what they taught us to do. And my mom was a singer too. So I really am fascinated by that. So you sang loud. Do you think at that age, I mean, maybe you weren't conscious of this, but that you were trying to see how much control you had over your voice at that point, like in some way, or being told maybe. you couldn't do it too? <laughs> I think that being told I couldn't do it was a definite, uh, you know, inspiration <laughs> catalyst. Um, I always, I, I've always said like, it's kind of, it's kind of fun to be underestimated yeah. when you can prove people wrong. Yeah. Um, and so that was sort of my first foray into that. And uh, was I trying to figure out how much control? I don't know if I was that conscious of it. Right. I think yeah. it was just exciting to be loud. Yeah. Because everyone was like, Chris is so quiet, quiet Chris. And I was like, wait a second, <laughs> no. Yeah, I've heard that. I mean, I heard that growing up too. Like I, I was shy at school, but loud at home and dancing For sure. and, and doing all that, you know, extroverted thing. But I really, I think that we all kind of, you know, no matter what kind of artist you are, there's a, there's a shared thing, especially with musicians, like they kind of leave it on the stage and then their personality is very much a little bit more tame than that, you know, and to be able to deliver that ability, like that rawness of your soul into your art form 
and through your voice, especially or an instrument, but you you do both, right? You do mm -hmm. all. So, I mean, how did you um, then transition like that power? So you got into the, you went into the, and did the show, right? Yeah. So what did that feel like? That was your first time on stage as a child? Cause I remember mine. And so what, how did that impact you? Like, what did that, was that your pivotal point? I think so. I think, I mean, I always had done, you know, the little school pageants and stuff before that, but this was the first time I was in a, like a real show. Um, and for sure, it was when I got bitten by that bug, you know, I was like, I want to do this again. I want to do community theater. I want to just do this always. And I want to be an actress and I go, go to LA and like do that whole thing. And unfortunately my parents, um, I mean, our parents got approached by people all the time when, especially when we were little, cause we were these little blonde hair, blue eyed twins and they were like yes we want them and um, like to you know especially because in film I'm sure you know like they use twins for reasons because of the hours yeah. and um so but they were like nope 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 we don't want to do that and and we found out later and they were like oh why <laughs> like, you know our lives could be so different and um and uh they yeah my my parents have their own jobs and very you know uh, they're awesome, but they just weren't interested in being, you know, stage parents and moving yeah. to LA and picking up their whole lives and just focusing on that, which I can respect. And so, so we sort of started the whole LA film thing in earnest um, when we could move there ourselves. And um, so it felt a little behind. Yeah, <laughs> but I know. But, I see. I relate to that because my mom did the same thing. She was she was an actor and a singer mostly and said like, you know, hey, you can't do that until you're 18. And so I always had a little chip. I love my mom, but like a little chip, right? Like you guys, yeah. oh, we were delayed and yeah. we've been doing Disney and, you know. We have so much money to pay for our <laughs> own college. Thanks, mom. <laughs> I still have student loans. Yeah, that whole thing. I mean. But at the same time, I'm so grateful now because I know that we know <laughs> the the kind of predators and the, you know, not just, not just for kids, just like even as adults, like coming into the business, um, it's just, you really have to have your head screwed on <laughs> or some kind of emotional maturity or tool. One tool. Yeah. For cool. sure. And I think that that's, yeah. that's one of the things I was going to say too, is like, it's easy to be like, oh, this would have happened, but like, it might've been terrible. Um, I just wanted to go into, but going back to your childhood, because I thought that it was interesting with your sister, um, because I'm fascinated lately, because in the pandemic, I'm focused on harmonies and just mm -hmm. kind of obsessed with them. And, mm -hmm. and then you kind of took that to the next level with your sister and sat and learned harmonies. Is that right? Yes. You, who were some of your like go-to people that you guys would learn or listen to, to try to recreate those harmonies? Hanson. Oh yeah. Yeah, for sure. Hanson. Um, that was sort of the reason that we started, yeah, trying to learn harmonies. So did that go on? I mean, did you kind of just do that all through your childhood? I mean, or was there some po point where you guys were like, oh, we're twins. We need to identify as artists separately in a oh. way. I mean, I think my sister definitely wanted to I, differentiate from me more than I did. Right. <laughs> like, like, she said some very s interesting things sometimes. She's, she's always been more fashionable than me. I'm just kind of like, I put clothes on because they cover my body. And <laughs> I would love to be more, you know, but, but she will, be, in high school, she would be like, oh, are you wearing that? I'm like, yeah. And she's like, well, can you change here? Wear this. And I was like, why? And she's like, cause I don't want anyone to think that you're me. <laughs> like, uh, and I dress okay. like that. That's funny. Oh my but, gosh. She doesn't do that now. Though. No, no, <laughs> she doesn't. No. Um, I'm making her sound like the worst, but no, she's Not great. At all. That's totally classic. I'd probably be like girlfriend, but that's <laughs> funny. I mean, and so what are some of the ways that you kind of helped her too. It sounds like you guys balance each other out. Are you close? Yeah, we're really yeah. close. Um, cool. she's, and she's, she's actually coming over it right after this, um, to help me with some promo 
shooting some promo stuff she's sort of taken on this role as like my artistic director of my sort of image i do want to talk about it because um the marketing uh and it's and it's authentic i don't feel like your your photos or your shots or anything you're trying to put on it seems that whoever has captured you um has captured you uh your soul and your essence and 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 not only that but kind of you know when you look at a photo of a musician you want to kind of get a taste of their music or something like you, there's some kind of where who is it kind of like mm -hmm. what kind of artist is this and i feel like yours is just so inviting it doesn't you don't even ask that question anymore you just go oh i just want to know who's that right yeah. and that's the first like step we all have to market even me as an artist support the show or whatever. So how do you come up with those ideas like underwater and shots and, you know, very creative and conceptual. And I think that that's an experience that a lot of people are looking for from the start of the album to the finish in promo shots on your website. They want a, a, to be enveloped by the artists that they're looking at. Yeah. Um, I mean, that's definitely something that I've really enjoyed in, in, from artists that I am inspired by and, you know, see like, I mean, Taylor Swift is amazing at that. Um, and so I definitely want to create that, but I've always said too, that I never want to make a music video where it's just me like in different outfits in different locations just singing. Like I want there to be a story of some kind or some kind of concept. Um, as a, so that it's a piece of art that's adding something that in and of itself, rather than just something to look at while I'm singing. And um, I think that that definitely comes from being in the theatrical background. And my sister is also a filmmaker. So she's been very involved, um, you know, making, she makes her own short films and stuff like that. And oh, cool. music videos are three minute short films, you know? Totally. And, yeah. I've just been incredibly, incredibly lucky to yeah. have so many wonderfully talented friends who are willing to just do stuff like this yeah. for me, with me. Yeah. Um, so I have, my sister tends to be sort of my eye, like I'll come to her and I'm like, this is my idea. And, and she's like, cool. And she'll like make it way cooler. And, um, <laughs> and I'll, you know, like you said, it's a, it's a, group effort um but she'll she, even when i'm saying I, I want this to be exactly where i'm basically i'm the director but i'm, I'm like i need your eye you know what i want because she yeah. does we are 20 in that way just because yeah. it, how anyone would be if you know someone for a long time i just love her aesthetic i love her eye and so like she's <laughs> just been wonderful to have as a as a resource and a partner in this whole situation getting back to the marketing and 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 i hate to call it branding i don't even like that terminology but i want to say it's like the essence your presentation as an artist i think it's so what you said is so valuable and important because if you can partner with people especially now like in this pandemic if we can partner with people that get us it's like i find that it's like a shorthand needs to happen right about now so it's like um that's so important like you have that connection with her already and that's so valuable and i encourage any like music maker or artist to do that yeah. <laughs> you know find someone who gets you down to like even the people that are designing your website or helping you with your website you can do it yourself nowadays um but i just i commend you on that and just kind of knowing yourself and you're having that vision for yourself and being bold enough to to step out in the vision which is kind of, I know, you know, we ha we're confident, but it's still like, what the, I'm yeah. gonna put that out there. Eesh, yeah, you know? yeah, no, it is kind of scary sometimes. Cause right. like, I wanna be, I wanna say, oh, I need to figure out who I am and what my, is this me and stuff. Right. And, but then remember that, like you said, there can be sort of a different version of you depending on what uh, album you're putting out or right. whatever. It doesn't have to always be the exact same and it's actually fun for it 
not to be. And uh, I should also mention before before we get too far past it that the other person that has been extremely uh, integral into this all the stuff that I've been doing for the last yeah. few years, is my friend Lee Holbrook. He's a guy that I know from high school. We did theater together in high school and we've stayed friends and he is the camera operator for those those um, underwater photos for oh, wow. the video for um, basically, yeah, everything I've done for the last couple of years, he's been behind the camera. He's a wonderful um, filmmaker but and photographer, but he's that's not what he's doing. He's, he's a IT guy. Just like I said, extremely lucky girl to have wow. this person who's like, that's fun for me. And he just wants to do it. So tell me your process of getting to LA. What, like, when did you, how old were you when you moved out here? And was this the first like music community, like legit music community you were a part of? Or did you, did that start in Florida? Oh, I, the music community didn't really start in Florida, although that would have been cool because yeah. Tom Petty Heck lived yeah. in Gainesville. Um, yeah. <laughs> but, um, I, cause I was, we started driving across the country when on my sister and my 11th birthday from Florida to come to California and to move to Monterey. And then, and we were like, oh my gosh, we're going to live next to the beach. Cause, and we lived in Gainesville. So it's, you know, three hour drive at least to the beach, but we just, it was a favorite thing to go. So, but, um, but our parents were like, well, I'm sorry we have to leave Florida, but we're going to live right next to the beach. And we were like, okay, fine. That's, that's fine. And so we get there and it's Monterey and it's the middle of July or it's the, you know, the middle, the first, it's the middle of summer and we, and it's cold and foggy and the beach was covered with rocks. And we just, we go like, yay, there it is. And we start running into the water and it was freezing. And we were like, what is this? How dare you? very different from Florida, but I love it now. And, and yeah, and then I went to uh, UCSB for college and then I moved to LA. Um, but I was kind of already doing the, the acting thing in LA when I was at UCSB. So I, I started when I was 18, like you did. Nice. That's cool. Um, I forgot that we had the, uh, the NorCal in common too. Whoa, yeah. weird. <laughs> I'm sure different eras. So Florida, NorCal, and then back down to LA, just right from, from Monterey, like straight out of high school. Mm -hmm. Wow. So you went to UCSB and then moved to LA after that. Yeah. But okay. while I was at UCSB, I was like traveling that. back and forth to yeah. LA for auditions and stuff. Yeah. How did you have time with all the partying at UCSB to do that? I <laughs> didn't party at all. Oh, you I did it. You good girl. <laughs> <laughs> um, didn't party at all. I didn't have a drop of alcohol. Well, okay. A drop is an exaggeration. I didn't have a That's drink. It. I like an entire drink. I like tasted things, but until I was 23 years old, um, oh, that at a pub. Awesome. good for you. So you had a little bit of time just to kind of identify on your own in a way. I think that's so yeah. important for artists to do that. Because yeah. whether you've been part of a band or you've been a twin <laughs> and you've been singing together, just it's so important to take that journey, I think, as an artist. And so you just, did you start, I see that you've, you've entered songwriting competitions and I think that's so important to talk about um, for other uh, people in our community, even if we've been doing this for a while, if an artist has been doing this for a while, to as a good reminder for everyone that there's tons of opportunities to put your songs out there. And not only in social media, obviously, but like competitions are a big Ooh. deal. I so, think that, that is something that people sometimes they say like, wow, you've, you've won all these competitions and stuff. Like, it's amazing. And I'm like, yeah, thank you. But, um, but you, they're like, why have an I? And I'm like, well, have you submitted to them? And they're like, no. And I'm like, yeah, you have to, you have to enter. Yeah. <laughs> you know? And I think that that's just one of those things that I didn't even realize, you know, a few years back. Mm -hmm. They don't just find you and give you awards. You have to enter. And, and that has really opened up a lot of opportunities for me. And so, yeah, I think that's really important for people to know, like look up contests. What is your songwriting process and how has it morphed in the pandemic? How do you keep that creative flow happening 
I heard that you run up and down stairs sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> tell us, tell us everything. <laughs> well, I did one time run up and down all the stairs in the swamp, the Gator Stadium, um, because I was just heartbroken and I needed to distract myself. Um, <laughs> but uh, I think, I mean, that is one of the things. If you listen to my music, you see there are a lot of heartbreak songs. You know that's pretty pretty par for the course, I think. But um, I that is one of my main ways of dealing with that in my life, and thus my main inspirations for my art. I don't. I, I always say I don't understand how people who don't have something like that to get through their lives. Like how how do they deal with heartbreak if they can't? Yeah, I don't know. It has to be music, out right? In some way. Yeah. But uh, my process is very, okay, it's always different, but the main kind of process is I'll just be thinking about things, whatever I'm feeling, and I'll write them down in an actual journal, or if I can with my hands, I like to do that, but, uh, but a lot of times it's on a note in my phone or something, cause I, or a voice memo, because it always happens when I'm driving. Or something. Showering. Um, yes. <laughs> right? Does that happen to you? I feel like that's really common. Um, yeah. I'd be interested to know exactly why that is. Uh, but um, yeah. I think that there's probably something about that your brain is focused enough on the, uh, the physical activity that you're doing, like showering or driving, that it is open to yeah. those kinds of creative pathways instead of all of the other noise. Oh my gosh, that's exactly something I would say. <laughs> yes, exactly. I agree with you. I think it's a maybe a relaxed state, even though driving isn't that relaxing. But whatever that is, it's like our brain gets an opportunity to enter another section and to, yeah. to get into that state. I mean, it's so important to allow our, our minds to do that. I think it's a very important thing you just said, though, about keeping a journal, like creatively. When I sit down to write a song, often it'll be like, oh, I wrote this song in a few hours, but okay, a few hours and the weeks and months beforehand while I was writing stuff down that I then go through and be like, okay, let me formulate this into a song now, you yeah. know? Uh, yeah. So that's pretty much the process is just gathering my thoughts and then at one point sitting down and putting them to music. Were you set to go on a 2020 tour too? Yeah, I was, yeah. I was, I had been okay. touring and I was planning out more tours. I was actually working with someone who was going to get me on some opening gigs yeah. um, with bigger bands. I actually have been doing a lot of live streaming. So I'm, I'm connecting with fans in that way. That's been lovely. And, uh, and, and so I'm not totally rusty on performing. I, I actually perform almost every day. Um, so that's good. But uh, the on the bright side, I think that this has really brought the artistic community together in a way that I had not experienced before. Like the, the things with Joel doing the town halls and Zoom, we didn't get together in, per in person and do that like, you know, once a month while before this, but now we can do that on Zoom and yeah, there are drawbacks to that, but, but um, yeah, I'm connecting with people in the music industry that I never probably would have connected with. There definitely has been a silver lining. Um, I also tend to be kind of a homebody generally, which sounds weird when I talk about that I went and performed in all 50 states last year. Right, right. Um, but I mean, I feel like even though I was on the road, I was still kind of a homebody because I'm like alone in my car. Oh, and then yeah. I would stay at places and just like hunker down in the room and then yeah. go perform and then be like, okay. <laughs> Yeah. That, like yeah because you have to rest after like giving it all out right yeah and that's something that's not talked about that often I don't think um that whole like giving it all it's a totally different rhythm I mean virtual versus and versus live yeah mm -hmm. it's gonna be an adjustment like either way going back and um I'm so impressed with the fact that everybody's live streaming I think that if we could all just like all of you artists that have dialed in your audio and and worked that out. Thank you for sharing with other artists because it's a that's pure mentorship. You know, we need it right now so yeah. that we can all 
um, find each other. And I'm just beyond grateful to the music community and music fans community. The fact that I can just turn on my phone and yeah. play some songs for them and they send me tips and that's how I'm living. I hope it merges with when we go back live. I hope that we stay in this live stream nation, if you will, because it just gives us so much more power of reach, you, you oh, know, yeah. internationally. And, yeah. And the fact that we can, that I can play a show with, you know, like I did a show where I was sort of opening for KT Tunstall in this private show on Zoom. Oh. Um, and I can play shows with my friends in Nashville and I can play shows with, you know, someone over in, Colorado, like Whoa. without it having to be this, I mean, it's fun to travel and get to see each other and actually right. have, it, but, but that's amazing. What are some of the platforms that they've been using? Have they just been doing zoom too? When they, when, when you've like been opening for KT, is it, or is it like, that was on zoom. Okay. And, but it's also, it's very kind of, it was a chill vibe situation. It was, oh sitting on our couches, playing yeah. songs for people who were hanging out like a happy hour. It wasn't yeah. like a whole show. I think it's really important too, to say that, like, again, going back to like the personal touch, if you will, like, I think people are digging seeing where people dwell and, you know, here's my kind of crazy weird setup with my light showing and whatever, <laughs> like it's getting better, you know, like who cares? I mean, people, yeah. content is still king, you know, and, Obviously, we need to hear that, so we have to dial in some technicalities like microphones and this and that. But I mean, I still am very impressed with it, and I think it's a, I think it's a good thing. I encourage every artist to start playing and singing, and just heck, you can delete it if you don't like it, but just start doing it to your phone because yeah. it. Then you're just like, like you just said, Chris. It's like that's only going to just polish you. And then put something up you like. Maybe you get a yeah. great take out of five, you know? I yeah. Mean and, I, and I'll say too about live streaming is it's a very, what I've found to be, yes, there are, you know, trolls and stuff too, yeah. but I found it extremely welcoming and warm community, very supportive of each other. Um, and it's, it's not, you don't, they love it when you say something like, hey, I'm rehearsing for my something. And yeah. you're, and you're just doing it in front of them because they feel like they got a backstage pass, like VIP, I get to watch sound check kind of feeling. Yes. It doesn't have to be perfect. No. It doesn't have to be like this polished situation. They actually, I, I do way better when I'm talking to people more, acknowledging my mistakes or like being like, oh, okay, I'm going to play yeah. that one again because we're rehearsing and they're like, yay, do it. You know? Um, yeah. I think that's cause you can still be cranking out like polished material and your album and yeah. great shots. I mean, it's really fun to discover like and meet you because now I have another, another awesome like song list, obviously, Aww. you know, um, I'm just really impressed with some of the songwriting because um, the lyrics are so specific and unique, you know, it's like, I've heard the sentiment before, but the, the way that you're expressing and it's just, it makes me visualize. And that's oh. something very important when I'm listening to music. I want to see that story in my head, like, you know, my own version, thank but thank you yeah. for your talent. Oh, thank you. I mean, that's, that's like, thank you for saying that's such a sure. perfect compliment. Cause that's exactly when I listen to the music that I love and that inspires me, that's exactly what I think about it. I'm yeah. like, they're, you're not saying anything new, but you're saying it in a really beautiful new way. And yeah. a lot of imagery. And like one of my, my biggest influences is uh, Gregory Allen Isakoff. Uh, oh, wow. His lyrics are in, insane and awesome. Um, and so, uh, yeah, that's always kind of what I am going for. So thank you for saying that. Well, you accomplished it. <laughs> Who in your life do, could you point to like, I don't know, do you have specific mentors that have really kind of changed your path or influenced your journey as a musician and as an, as a vocalist and a songwriter? Yeah. Uh, well, Brandy Carlisle and her band, well, her guitar player specifically, Tim Hanseroth, um, is a very close friend 
and he's, he's the one who kind of taught me how to play guitar <laughs> and um and just gave me all all the kind of base basis foundation for m my songwriting all the advice of how he writes and how they work together as a band and yeah. how they perform like how she speaks to the audience all of that um being getting to be around that mm -hmm. when i was just starting was invaluable so yeah i i have to say that <sighs> you are so right on because i mean you're just paying attention is what's happening i mean you're so smart oh, you're so you. you're so observant because that is such a huge mindset you know just to open your ears and listen for the how to's when did you learn to play guitar to accompany your vocals playing okay. violin from when i was nine what um, okay talk about all the instruments that you play right now <laughs> okay well i mean there aren't, aren't that many i wish that i was better at playing the piano i i haven't put in the work that that takes um but i did start playing violin when i was nine um and was in a youth orchestra wow and so you know learned all the whole theory and everything which i have forgotten most of um, <laughs> but then i started playing guitar because that was a much easier instrument to sing along with mm -hmm. and carry than piano mm -hmm. so guitar was how i went and then now i play a little bit of ukulele i played tiny bit of piano which and this is true the only thing that I kind of know about piano, I learned from Brandy Carlisle. She taught me this trick. And then Timmy was like, I taught her that. I'm like, okay, fine. It was from you then. And, um, but that's, uh, I still only can kind of do the like chord, chord, <laughs> chord. So I would love to have some, if I ever have any point where I can get like an assistant or someone that's doing all of the other little tedious admin stuff that I have to do every day for the business side of things. If I ever have someone else doing all of that, then I would for sure want to focus on learning some more piano. Yeah. It's just the ability to do a few things that you feel like you can play, right? Mm -hmm. Like the chords and yeah, I, that's where I am too, but you're much more musically inclined. And, oh. uh, that's that's awesome i i think that's so important to um to even try like it's hard when you're a singer to do both right don't you think it's hard a hard coordination to master it at first was definitely felt like patting your head and rubbing your stomach yeah um again one of the things that i'm shocked at myself for being able to so easily do now because <laughs> i remember the beginning yeah. um and still, if I have to learn, you know, a new chord or a new chord progression where I have to learn how to do those changes, it's, it's like, I'm right back at the beginning, like, Ugh! <laughs> you know, but um, yes, it is yeah. hard to figure out the rhythms while singing. Sometimes there are even strumming patterns that I'm like, okay, I can do the strumming pattern. And then I try to sing and it all falls apart. So Good it's always, way. yeah. Uh, it's always a learning curve of always still hopefully getting better. I hope. <laughs> and yeah. I love that song. I'm telling you. And I like, I like the fact that you have it two different ways. I can access it two different ways, you know, two different because you have an acoustic version. Yes. Yes. Well, because the first version is very upbeat, very kind of like uplifting and that's what I wanted it to be. But then while we were in lockdown and I was feeling very kind of melancholy and stuff, yeah. um, I decided to make this very stripped down acoustic slower version because it also has that feeling. Like it right. sounds really upbeat, but if you actually listen to the lyrics, it's kind of sad. It's kind of sad. Um, I know, but, but it's, I, it's like the good cleansing heartbreak stuff. <laughs> yeah, it's like, it's not meant to be this like despairing it. place. Yeah. It's a place of like, I'm sad and heartbroken, yeah. but I know that it will get better. And I am going to, you know, lift myself up out of this sadness because yeah. I am still alive and breathing. She's like, that's a refined, beautiful, Thank you. beautiful instrument you've refined there because you're not just a singer. You're not just a musician. 
when you have vision for yourself and then you can implement that, I find that is an artist. Oh, right? well, thank you. Yeah. That's really, really, really nice to hear. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you for letting me be, yeah. you know, come into your, into yeah. your space and your day and, and having me on the show. Mm -hmm.